So good evening, everyone, um, and um, it's great to see so many people here. It sounds like I'm starting a, uh, a stand-up routine. I'm not. Um, so diversity in all its forms, I think, is an important element to get across right from the beginning uh, of this discussion. Um, I think uh, I think it's fair to say that uh, within the the research sector, par par uh, particularly, um, diversity has also been synonymous with with gender, um, and I think I want to get rid of uh, get, get away from that. And hopefully tonight we can we can talk a much more about, about diversity in its in its broader sense. Um, you know, being inclusive in our definition of diversity is quite an important element. Um, because well, one of the things we're looking at within UK Research and Innovation and within the BBSRC, which is, as, as Laura said, a part of UKRI as of uh, six months ago, um, we're looking at uh, team how uh, diverse teams lead to diverse uh, ideas and perspectives um, and using these diverse ideas and perspectives how that generates uh, interesting and novel approaches to research and that's what, what we're really looking at is how do we get that innovative research uh, through into uh, into the labs uh, and the diversity uh, is within research experiment, uh, experimental design and research design is an increasingly important element of what we're thinking about. about. So designing experiment only using female mice, for example, or uh, an all-male team designing artificial intelligence uh, uh, um, activities will have an impact on the outputs of the research. So that's something that we are we're very early in the stage of looking at, but it's something that we think is quite important. Um, just a bit of stats. I pulled these off, the stats off. I don't have any slides. Um, from uh, our data that we published, um, and this is HESA data. So within the biosciences, and it's quite difficult to extract from, from HESA, but essentially we've got about a 64% 60, uh, male population in the biosciences and researchers. Uh, when we look at the student population, it's, uh, it's about half and half. And actually it's the trend is increasingly more women are doing uh, bioscience PhDs than men. So how do we get from that uh, kind of 50-50 approach to uh, in, into longer term careers is, is an interesting challenge and I think maybe we'll hear about that something tonight. One area that I think we, we, uh, I'm particularly interested in is, is around the age profile of our grant holders uh, and also our students. Um, the research councils across all disciplines tend to uh, have a student population which is much younger than the HESA population would suggest. And that we have no idea why that is the case. So that's something we're, we're looking at in more detail. Similarly, looking at the uh, population of uh, kind of ethnic minorities, 80% um, uh, of the biosciences are, are uh, white researchers. 9% um, is, is uh, kind of non-white, and we've got 5% who are not disclosed. And that, that number is decreasing, and that's a great success, I think, in, in some of the, the messaging around diversity and inclusion that's coming out of the sector, that you know, to, to understand and what we can do to help people, uh, we need to know about those people. So one of the things that I would like to kind of pick up on uh, during the discussions today is, is how do we uh, build inclusive research environments? We've heard a lot in the press over the past week or so from CERN, I'm not going to talk about that. Um, but how do, we, how do we support people from a multitude of backgrounds, from a multitude of experiences, uh, get a career in research, a successful career in research? And for that, we need to understand how people transition into research careers. We've all heard of the, of the uh, cliff edge of postdoc into lecturer, but actually in the biosciences, it happens much earlier on. It happens at the undergraduate to postgraduate, particularly at, uh, in the ethnic minority population. So how can we, as a sector, support people uh, going into research careers? And then finally, the area that is a longer term thing is around how we, how we support and reward science. How, what's the culture of research, the culture of science? Um, the, the reward and recognition mechanisms that we have, uh, not just in the UK, but globally in, in science. Um, how do we support flexible working when uh, a PI may or may not expect their student or their postdoc to be in the lab uh, 26 hours a day, eight days a week. Um, and then finally, there's something for the funders in the room to th consider is how, excuse me, how do we support particularly uh, younger women uh, get some of the large program grants which are traditionally held by uh, old white men. 
these are all big challenges. And I'm not suggesting we're going to solve them all today, but I think aiding it in, in, a, in, a, in a group like this is, is a helpful way to get people to start thinking about it and hopefully uh, start the conversation in your organisations. So with that, uh, I'm going to introduce the, the first panel, uh, and I think I move this way. Uh, so I'm, we've got three panellists um, for the first session, and each have got exactly seven minutes. Uh, not really. Um, they've got about seven minutes uh, to talk about their experiences in this space. Uh, so I'd like to uh, start off by um, welcoming Rachel Adeludun from the Sarah Cannon Research Institute. 